Good afternoon and welcome to three o'clock with SAC. Give me a second while I welcome our Spanish speaking neighbors. Buenas tardes, gracias por estar con nosotros hoy día en la 3 p.m. con SAC. Si quieren acceso al programa, vamos a usar una nueva este, tecnología o nueva línea. So para ustedes que lo han usado en el pasado, hay un nuevo número. Van a llamar ahora a 571-317-3122. Otra vez, 571-317-3122. Cuando le contestan la llamada, el clave se puso un poquito más eh, grande. Eso vamos a, a apuntar, que es 437-949. 173, otra vez 437 949 173. Uh, so por, por favor, usen eso para acceso y nos dejan saber si nos va mejor con este nuevo este, tecnología. Uh, my name is Tammy Rivera. I'm the executive director and lead organizer for Southside Organizing Center. And what I was explaining to our Spanish speaking neighbors is that we're trying a new teleconference technology uh, this morning because we were having some troubles with our former one. And so we have new phone numbers and new code uh, to share once those that phone number um, is answered. And so we're gonna give it a try and we're asking the residents who are participating to let us know how that goes. Uh, please know that we are still here with you all in this challenging time, and you can reach us in all the same ways that you usually do at our phone, 672-8090, our email, soc at socmilwaukee.org, and on our website at www.socmilwaukee.org. And we still have our COVID page, uh, our coronavirus page, where you can get information, resources, and ways you can take action in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, please know that it takes a whole crew to make sure we're with you during this period in the day. All our staff, uh, from production to interpretation, to making comments on here, to answering the phone and watching all the social media. So we're very committed to making sure we're continuing our relationship uh, with you. Uh, we brought back our survey promotion for the week. And so for those of you, we are going to reinstitute for this week, the daily drawing of $25 gift card. And you can enter that drawing by filling out our survey. And it's super, super, um, easy. We have um, three or four questions that you answer. What did we share today that was useful to you? What is working? What we can change or add? Super, super easy. And we, su and we need that. We need to know that we're responding to your needs and we need to share that with our funders that you're giving us feedback. So please do uh, participate. Also, uh, if you missed a show or part of a forum, you can get them in English or a Spanish version dubbed over um, on our Facebook page or YouTube. And so uh, they're there for you at any given time. Let me tell you what's coming up in the week though. We have some really um, great programming for you. Tomorrow, we have two guests. Um, our featured guest is Harold Mester. Uh, he's the Director of Public Affairs at our very own and marketing at our very own uh, Milwaukee Mitchell uh, International Airport. And so if you're wondering um, what's happening in terms of traveling from there uh, in relation to the coronavirus, we're gonna hear the, a status report um, directly from that source. So you wanna be with us um, tomorrow. In addition, we have Teresa Jemison from NAMI. That's the national um, Alliance on Mental Illness as we continue a couple more days of mental health um, focus. And then on Wednesday, we have a newly elected, pretty newly elected older woman, Marina Dramichayevic, who's gonna be with us. If you recall, we shared that she um, submitted and it got passed unanimously the safe vote, uh, which is uh, making sure we all get to vote by 
by the mail and some other initiatives that she'll be sharing. Our civic engagement manager, um, Gabe, um, will be helping us to understand what's going on. And uh, Marina will, will be able to share her role, her new role um, as she's a county uh, supervisor as well. And then on Thursday, we have a Deputy Commissioner of Environmental Health back with us, uh, Claire Evers, um, who will be giving us some details on where we're at as a community. And then we have our also our very own uh, Health Department Commissioner, Jeanette Koalik back, and she'll be giving us sort of the macro view on what's happening. And we're going to also get a focused look at our Latino uh, X population. So you don't want to miss the program. Uh, before we get started, I want to make sure uh, that you know our disclaimer. Everything that's shared on the program, the views and opinions are not necessarily those that reflect uh, the opinions of SAC. And we have to say that because of the type of organization that, that we are and to let you know that we're really committed to creating space uh, to for people to voice uh, their opinions and um, what's important to them and what's happening. And um, and we can't always sign off on, on those things. Uh, anyway, moving on to our critical updates. Uh, we always uh, want to be supportive of residents' voice and participate with that as much as we can. And so wanna share that we continue in solidarity with the protesters and their families on the front line, making sure that the issues that we deal with as a nation and locally are not um, just uh, swept under the rug or not taken seriously. And this time they're not giving up. And so daily that continues. So proud of you all, especially you young folks, making sure that's happening. We're putting our efforts into the forum um, and so uh, we're so appreciative of the role that you all, the critical and pivotal role you all are playing in the front lines. And then just to say, uh, we don't wanna forget uh, our folks who are having really challenging times uh, because of the coronavirus. So those of you um, who have lost loved ones, family members, our thoughts and prayers are with you. Those of you as well who um, tested positive and are dealing with distress, um, and the consequences of that and our small business community, um, those of you who are isolated, the kids who haven't been able to go to school, et cetera. Let's not forget um, folks, it's been a long time and folks are still dealing with that. And we look forward to being safe, but safety is the most important thing that we're um, emphasizing at this time. All right, uh, wanna make sure you know a couple of things that are happening tomorrow just because it's Monday and it's a quick turnaround. One is uh, the Fire and Police Commission is holding a series of town hall sessions virtually. And so in the past, we were all able to go to a location and share our thoughts and concerns and try to get some feedback. And now because of the times, everybody's doing that digitally as we are. And so tomorrow, it's called Bridging the Divide. Uh, Milwaukee's community and police relations. Just wanted to show you the letter. I know you can't see it all, but thinking you need a break from seeing my face sometimes when I'm talking so I don't lose you. So I just wanted to share that. Um, and tomorrow at 5.30 uh, on a Facebook Live, um, they're going to be on a Facebook venue. They're going to be holding a town hall session. And the note they sent us was they really want the CCC, and I'll talk about that in a second, um, uh, CCC to uh, engage and just remind them of what our recommendations were for MPD um, and the FPC. Uh, also, they wanted to know the results of our survey. So thank you to about the 100 people who um, filled out the survey uh, for Chief Morales. We did submit that. And then... Um, they want to know what um, the summary. And so I'll speak to them on that. And then we want to know, as well as you know, what's happening with the whole Joel Acevedo case. And so those are the things that uh, we're thinking of lifting up. Let me know if you have any thoughts that you want to make sure that you all um, that get lifted up at that meeting. But the most important thing is to participate if you can. 
Um, so please, you know, do so. Um, and then uh, the CCC, the Collaborative Community Committee. I hope you've had a chance to watch the video or look at the report online. I'm going to make some time to share the report again here, the shorter version, the PowerPoint. It is 22 slides, though. So maybe Friday, if we don't get a guest booked, I'll do that. Um, just because I know sometimes taking the extra step, you you say you, you want to, and, and then it, you, the time never arrives. So if we don't have a guest on Friday, I'll share it, or soon I'll share it with you again. Um, we, As you know, um, we had been uh, waiting to be uh, reappointed ex and for it to get going. So good news. Uh, looks like all the members uh, are in place. Um, the Common Council uh, confirmed that. Um, and we should be up and running again for a new cycle very soon. And if you remember, there was um, some tension around the mayor starting a new commission and whether that would usurp the work of this. The mayor has um, you know, publicly confirmed his support of the CCC. And so we're looking forward to what the commission um, that he's starting uh, will, will be reshaped as. Um, and if you remember, I, I reported that last the uh, last Friday, the meeting with the mayor um, it wasn't quite successful. But we've made some progress since then, and I hope uh, to be able to share that progress with you soon. As soon as I get the green light and everything sort of lands in the right place, I'll share I'll share what was resolved uh, between the mayor and the CCC with the help of the Office of uh, Violence uh, Prevention. So let me check here uh, live comments. My cell phone is like a Christmas light right now. Um, so I, I'm, if you're sending me folks information there, I'll have to look at it at the next segment and then respond. Ah, Gladi, our staffer who's uh, in charge of our bilingual services, asked those folks who went to the translation line to uh, please uh, mute your phones while you're on the line. Great. Marianne, Ah, looking forward and hoping this service works better. Us too, Marianne. We definitely want uh, folks to participate and be with us. Um, so uh, hopefully that works. And please do share your feedback on our interpretation services. I mean, we're doing that um, to make sure that uh, you all can participate with us. And so please, uh, with con toda confianza, with all the confidence in the world, let keep continue to give us feedback. That's how, that's why we changed it on your feedback. So please do. All right. Uh, now I'm going to invite on our coronavirus coordinator, who's also our forum coordinator, uh, Marlene Zara. Hola, Marlene. Hi. Looking forward to our COVID-19 update for the day. Yes, I'm excited to share some new updated information. Uh, so just a reminder that it is still Mental Health Week. And that being said, I'm going to kind of give everyone a rundown of some nice activities that they can do with their family members uh, during this time. And it's very family oriented and very um, kid friendly. So some things you can do is call grandma and grandpa, aunts and uncles, cousins and friends on FaceTime, Zoom, Skype, and Facebook. You can write a letter to family and friends or a pen pal via mail. Um, uh, you can wait to mail it until the crisis passes or take a picture and send the letter via messenger or email. Uh, lots of people don't really mail letters anymore so it's kind of nice if like your grandma receives a nice letter from you. Uh, prepare birthday cards for your loved ones and mail it to them. Um, have your children write and illustrate a story you can actually publish in a book. Um, you can use like a service called Lulu, or you can write the story together as a family. You can even go for a picnic, picnic while respecting COVID-19 distance regulations. Um, uh, and, or even paint together, go, you know, order some paint and, or any paint that you have laying around and create some art with you and your children. It's a great fun time and it really will allow them to express themselves for fully. Um, or go for a walk together. A nice walk outside in nature is 
what's definitely needed during this time uh, while, you know, respecting COVID-19 distance regulations. And you can find all of these different nice activities um, at 123homeschoolforme.com. They have over a hundred different activities that you can utilize during this time. Uh, yeah, and it's it's pretty great. So my next update I have for you is the phase three update. So the numbers have been reevaluated for phase three regarding COVID-19. Um, so there are some things that they go over regarding criteria. The first in, uh, form of information that they gather is cases, which measures how much COVID-19 is in our community and its impact. So our current status, status is at green, um, which meant, means that within the past 14 days, there's been a negative trend or a uh, uh, percent positive 5% less um, in the past 14 days, which means our status has improved from last week, which was in yellow. Another thing that they look at is testing, which is originally measured as the ability for residents who have symptoms of COVID-19 to assess a lab test. So the current status we are in is yellow. There's no change from last week. Um, that's because there are 1,200 to 2,000 tests per day or 5 to 10% positive results for the past five days, which is an average, um, the average was 716 um, per day uh, last week, and that's a 10% positive rate. Um, for Then they look at care. So care is the percentage of pa patients and hospitals with COVID-19 and hospital capacity to handle COVID-19 patients. Uh, green, we're currently at green, which means that 100% of hospitals are not in crisis, meaning that's a less than 10% of hospital patients have COVID-19. Our current status is at green as of uh, June 19th, and there's n there hasn't been a change since last week. Lastly, the last thing they look at is safety, which is adequate PPE, um, which is uh, uh, safety equipment available for healthcare personnel, long-term care facilities, and first responders. This includes masks, gowns, and gloves. Uh, there's a minimum requirement to move forward eight to 28 days of all uh, protective equipment supply for the majority of hospitals. The current status is at green in Milwaukee as of June 19th. This is a positive change since last week, which we were in yellow. So we're still in phase three, therefore businesses and activities are allowed to resume in a measured manner in conjunction with evidence and consistent execution of physical distancing and protective uh, measure requirements and safe business practices. So continue to be six feet apart and continue to wear a mask everywhere you go. Um, if you have gloves, utilize them. If you have um, yeah, anything, any protective gear, please utilize it. The Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction released guidelines today uh, for reopening schools in the fall. Uh, it's an 83 page document that details plans for a safe return to school and uh, it said they expect schools to reopen in the fall, but expect it to look very different amid the pandemic. Several scheduling scenarios are presented in the DPI's plan, including variations of four day weeks, two day rotations, and continued virtual learning for secondary students. Um, so they will have different regulations such as cleaning the school um, every four days or every five days, uh, having you know online classes that are virtual um, and learning in outdoor spaces or partnerships with community-based organizations uh, to keep that student-teacher ratio uh, being 10 to one or fewer. Um, I can give you all more detail on that in, in another segment because it is a very detailed document. But for now, I can leave the link in the comments section 
where you can take a look at all of the different possibilities that schools might take in order to um, move forward with COVID-19 for the fall, for the um, upcoming fall. So the DPI also addressed that these inequities in the planning around the pandemic is focused on providing school districts the necessary supports and regulatory relief to pursue innovative strategies to ensure equitable access to learning for all. So take that into consideration when you're reading this document. Um, but that's all of my COVID-19 updates for today. Um, yeah, I hope everybody had a great weekend and I will see you all tomorrow where we will have a NAMI a representative come on to talk about their mental health resources. Thank you, Marlene. And just so folks know, uh, we're putting together maybe a week just dedicated to education because I know you all want to know what's happening uh, for your kids and even college students. Uh, coming up. What we're waiting for is the school board has to make a decision about the fall. And so once we do that, uh, we're going to be putting a week dedicated to um, education. Maybe we'll see if Dr. Bosley can come back, the superintendent of MPS. But we also want to dedicate one of those days to bilingual education and one of those days to special education as we discussed when Dr. Posley was with us. So thank you, Marlene, for that overall uh, update from the Department of Public Instruction. Thank you, thanks. All right, now I'm gonna uh, bring on our Civic Engagement Manager, Gabe Charles, to give us an update on what's coming up this week. Hey everyone, hoping that you all had a good weekend and I just wanna give a special shout out to the organizers and participants of the Black is Beautiful ride that happened around the city yesterday. It was really beautiful, really inspiring, and I'm just very thankful to be able to be a part of those sorts of events. So big shout out to all of you for organizing a really awesome ride and much love to the Black community as a whole. Today, I just wanna give you an idea of what you can expect this week. There are a number of meetings coming up this week uh, including city level and county level that you'll want to look out for. So starting today at 1.30, there was a steering and rules committee meeting. And the mayor and the Milwaukee Police Department were actually scheduled to have a communication at this meeting. So I haven't been able to watch it yet, but that's definitely something you'll want to go back and look at that meeting for to see what they had to say. And we will definitely be doing that as well. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., there's a licenses committee meeting at, at, at 9 a.m. On Also tomorrow, there is a city county task force on climate and economic equity, and they're scheduled to give a report about emissions. So if you're interested in climate change and equity, you'll definitely want to tune into that. Mm. On Wednesday at 9 a.m., there's a public works committee meeting. On Thursday at 9.30 a.m., there is the county board meeting, and there hasn't been a meeting of the county board in a while, so that'll definitely be something to tune into. Their agenda is not posted yet, but there, I'm sure they'll have a lot, to, a lot of things to talk about in that meeting as well. Also on Thursday at 9 a.m. is the Public Safety and Health Committee meeting, and they're gonna be discussing a number of resolutions that they will then bring to the, the whole Common Council about urging the Fire and Police Commission to pass policies that would require them to report to the Common Council if they're going to buy military grade level equipment and to give an inventory about the equipment that they do have, and a number of other police-related resolutions. So definitely going to tune into that, and we'll keep you posted on what that what happens at that committee meeting. And then at 1.30 on Thursday, there is a Community and Economic Development Committee meeting. So that's what's coming up this week. Those are definitely some meetings you will want to be tuned into, and we will give you a report out on Friday about what happens during those meetings. 
We're also going to be hearing from Alderwoman Marina Dmitrievich this week. So she will have, as the chair of the Public Safety and Health Committee meeting, I'm sure she'll have lots to tell us about the meetings that have been happening and what's to come from the Public Safety and Health Committee. So definitely tune in on Wednesday to hear from Alderwoman Dmitrievich. Now I'm going to leave you with a census video, and I just want to remind everyone that we need to be doing a census and we need to be encouraging our friends and family to be doing the census. On Friday, I'm going to go through the website that I went through last week that shows the hard to count populations. So it was, if you remember, it was a map that had orange, yellow, and blue colors to indicate the percentage of people that have filled out the census. So we're going to take a look at that website, see what has changed. Our canvassers have been calling folks around the, around the South Side to encourage them to fill out the census and to help guide them through the process. And if you want to receive a call and haven't received one from us to help you get through the census online or on the phone, however it may be, please give our office a call and we will be happy to help you walk through that process. So I'll leave you with a video and I will see you all on Wednesday. It's important to stay healthy. So you know what's something that you can do at home that doesn't require you to be around a lot of people? You can take the census. And it doesn't matter if you're into politics or not. It doesn't matter what language you speak. No importa si no tiene papeles. If you live in the United States, you need to take the census. Okay, but like, what is it? What is the census? Here's how it works. Every 10 years, the government counts every single person living in the United States. This includes citizens, non-citizens, babies, abuelitas, literally everyone. If you haven't already, you will receive a notification in the mail from the U.S. Census Bureau, at which time you can fill out the census online. Even if you haven't gotten a notification, you can still fill out the census over the internet. Don't have internet? No problem. You can fill out the census by mail and over the phone. The best part of it is you don't have to leave your home. What kind of questions do they ask? The census asks basic questions like name, sex, age, race, or ethnicity, how many people live in your home, how they're related to one another, whether you rent or own, and that's pretty much it. Now, we get it. Nobody likes doing paperwork. Paperwork sucks. But you gotta remember, this paperwork takes 10 minutes to complete and will decide what happens to our neighborhoods for the next 10 years. So why is it important for me to be counted? Here are two reasons. It's important because it affects our political power. The House of Representatives has 435 seats. Because these seats are divided up by population, the census determines the number of seats your state gets in the House. After every census, adjustments are made. After the 2010 census, states like Texas gained four seats in the House, while states like New York and Ohio lost two. The census not only affects the House of Representatives, but it reshapes the Electoral College. You know, the system that decides presidential elections. Census data is also used to redraw state and local legislative districts to better reflect shifting populations. So, you don't want to lose seats in the House of Representatives, and you don't want to lose your political power just because you decided to sit this one out. The census determines how public services in our communities get funded. The government uses the census to decide how much money should go to state and local governments. That money is then used to fund public services like schools, hospitals, roads, senior centers, and other public utilities. It's really hard for the government to plan where they should put schools and hospitals if they don't know how many people live in that neighborhood. So there have been instances where states do not get the funding for these vital services because they fail to meet the population requirement for certain federal funds. Take Circle Pines, Minnesota, for example. They were 82 people shy of the 5,000 population requirement to qualify for certain federal road funds. 82 people. The point is, if you don't make yourself counted, you're potentially losing money for your community. And that pothole down the street will never get fixed. The census will affect our political power. It will affect our elections. It will affect our daily lives for the next 10 years. That's the power of the census. And if we don't participate, we're putting our communities at risk. So what you're saying is I can fill out the census, contribute to my community's political representation, financial future, and important demographic data for the next decade without ever having to leave my house? Exactamente. So remember, wash your hands for 20 seconds, stay at home if you can, and make yourself counted in 2020 because this is about the future of our families, our communities, and our country for the next 10 years.
Thank you, Gabe. Um, and really um, enjoying those census videos. They help us to really be encouraged from a bunch of different angles to fill out the census. Uh, folks, I see Maricanos with us as well. Um, how about you all who are uh, receiving interpretation? How is it going? Will you let me know in the comments? Is it going okay? Were you able to hear on the call? The call didn't get dropped. Those were the problems we were having. So let me know how that's going. Um, all right, I uh, want to invite Marisol Diaz, our communications manager, on to share our promotion uh, for this week. Hi, Community Forum. Reminding you of our daily $25 gift certificate drawing by filling out the survey located in the comments section. In the following day's forum, we'll announce the winner. It's a quick five-question survey, and you can enter daily and win daily. Thanks for those of you who have been filling them out, and thanks for tuning in. Now let's find out who's today's winner. Well, we do have a winner from the Father's the grandfather the Father's Day Keep Your Grandfather Safe uh, promotion. We're going to show that slideshow again, um, and then announce the winner of the folks who entered that. Isn't that sweet? Our grandparents play such an important uh, role in our lives. Um, so the winner of the folks who submitted their entries to keep their uh, grandfathers and grandparents uh, safe is Crystal Sanchez. Crystal, send us an email at soc at socmilwaukee.org to claim your gift card. We'll have to make sure you fill out a survey. Um, and that we get all your contact information and then we'll be able to um, get your gift card. Diana Becerra said she won in May and hasn't gotten it yet. We'll have our staff follow up and see what's happening. I know we were backlogged in the beginning, but it was my understanding we were all caught up. So we're definitely going to look into that, Diana, and we're good for it. It's coming. Este, tarde pero seguro. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you. Uh, we wanna make sure you fill out that survey, please. Uh, we we really need that and we want um, to hear you. And so I wanna remind you who's coming up. You don't wanna miss this week, important stuff. We're really committed to bringing you subject matter experts and original source information because there's so many rumors and misinformation um, going around. All right, uh, Marianne, hasta ahora está funcionando muy bien el ocio de traducción. Gracias. Okay, Marianne says it's working. Our interpretation so far so good. Great. Uh, when you talk to us and you let us know in those surveys, we really do respond. We really do listen. Okay, este, tomorrow, two guests. Don't you want to know what's happening with travel and Mitchell Airport? We have the director of their public affairs and marketing, uh, Harold Mester, on tomorrow uh, from the Milwaukee Mitchell International Airport to, sh to share all the changes in the activity there. Also tomorrow, um, Teresa Jemison from NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, will be here, continuing a mental health focus, sharing about uh, the top things there. And on Wednesday, uh, newly elected, uh, older woman Marina Marina Dmitrievic will be with us. She's also a county supervisor. She's the older woman for the 14th district, and she'll be talking about her role and the work that she's doing at the Common Council. And then on Thursday, we have our very own health department commissioner back with us, Jeanette Kowalik, who's going to give us a macro view 
of what's happening with COVID, plus emphasize this uh, spike that we're seeing in the Latino IX community. And then the deputy uh, commissioner on environmental health is gonna be back with us again, uh, Claire Evers, and she's gonna give us the micro view, uh, some of the details on where we are in the phases of opening. And so you don't wanna miss uh, those days. So uh, folks, this is a shorter program today uh, because we have a longer program during the week as well. So it's nice sometimes to be with you briefly. And so please um, stay tuned with us. We thank you, be safe. And we're gonna leave you with our thank you uh, videos for our other partners, our funders. Hello, Stock viewers. My name is Kaiser Strock and I live in the Polonia neighborhood. We would like to thank everyone for supporting our three o'clock with Stock live show and for completing our Stock survey. In addition to thanking our residents, for tuning in and sharing our show, we would also like to thank the following sponsors. Wisconsin Voices, Community Development Block Grants, Neo Philanthropy um, State Infrastructure Fund, Movement Voter Project, Catholic Campaign for Human Development, the Zilber Foundation, City of Milwaukee Office of Violence Prevention, Tides Foundation, City of Milwaukee, Promise Zones, and all the faithful individuals who support our SOC through their personal donations. Thank you.